All right, this is Mobile Gamer Nerd, and we are back with another free-to-play Mystery Shard only Champion Spotlight. Today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite ugly dwarf man, Master Butcher. Now, what is he good for? I mean, we randomly built him basically because I wanted to try to get through Bommel, and I thought he might be a good idea, and I saw that a lot of people liked him for some reason, and I think I figured out what that reason is. He's, uh, he's kind of badass. So... What can this ugly little blacksmith do? Let's find out. Let's look at all his stuff. So, skills. He has an A1 that puts a 30% chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn. Very good for, a, for an A1 because you can just constantly provoke, especially if he has a counterattack. Number two, he places a provoke debuff on the target enemy for two turns, and that's 100% basically. Places a 15% increased crit rate buff on all allies and a increased attack buff also. I wish it was defense because I usually use him with things like Sill or Drekstar, but unfortunately it's attack, so it is what it is. So it's not terrible for your DPS. When attacked, he heals all allies equal to the amount of damage taken. This is why he's good for Bommel, because every time one of those bombs goes off, because it doesn't work against bosses, but the bombs are considered as minions. So the bombs blow up, they hit him, and they heal everyone else. So nobody dies except him, and then still picks him back up, and then problem solved. Then he has a revive an ally with a full HP when he's killed. So hopefully if Syl dies, nobody else is dead, which is usually not the way it goes, but sometimes it does go that way. And then Master Butcher will just resurrect her and then you start all over again. We have him in the Faultless Defense uh, Blessing. Reason being is that we want more HP. We want to get him up as much, po as, much as possible in the HP range uh, because he needs that HP to stay alive. Now, Masteries. We went down the support tree. Most people would probably go into like the accuracy or something like that. I actually went for the HP. I want him to have as much HP as possible. So we did take the extra 3K. He has some accuracy stuff in here. He also has, you know, more accuracy here. He has a reduced cooldown. We have increased speed if anyone else is dead. So then he's always the fastest. So maybe if he dies, you know, who knows? Maybe he'll provoke. Well, it might save you. And then he has a chance to extend his buffs, which is very nice. We also have him in a decreased damage. Uh, by critical hits, which is good. We want him to stay alive as long as possible. He increases his own passive healing, which is nice. He has uh, increases his HP when someone else heals. We have a chance to remove debuffs so that he doesn't get stuck with stuns or anything stupid. He reduces the damage he takes from a specific enemy, which is great for bosses. Uh, he increases ally resist since he places buffs. So when he places his buffs, everyone gets 10, gets, uh, 10 resist, which is nice. And he has a chance to counterattack, which is good for that provoke. Winner, winner. Artifacts. We do have him in the HP healing set right here. Not the best for him. It does have the plus 15% HP, which is nice. A protect set could be good because it'll heal him by 10%. You kind of want to balance your HP with how much he heals back, which is nice. Uh, I wouldn't want to lower his HP to 50,000 just to get that extra HP. I would much rather have him have high HP with a lower healing because then at the end, at the end of that, he basically heals for more. So it's kind of weird, but we did get speed from him. He's usually not supposed to be this fast, but he's at 80, got 81 extra speed, but it's all from little parts. Say like this one has 18 speed just from his glove. This has 13 from his chest. We don't even have a speed boot on him, and that's plus nine. So he has an HP boot, chest, and glove. So he's got a lot of HP going on. He's got an HP ring, a defensive amulet, and he's got resist on the banner with some more speed. Very good speed build. If I was trying to get him to speed, I could literally just switch this piece to speed, and he would easily be somewhere around 220, 230. So if I wanted that, I could do it. It is an option. Otherwise, I'd be sacrificing 50% HP if I do that, which I don't know if this is worth it. I just don't know. It could be. Um, total stats. He has 79,000 HP, 2,000 attack, which is basically useless. Defense is 2487. I would much rather have that higher. Speed is 181. Doesn't really matter depending on your build. Crit rate, crit damage doesn't matter on this. Uh, resistance and accuracy should be higher. Resistance should probably be at least 200, 250. Accuracy, you'd probably want to get this higher if, if you're working with the Provoke, which I am. So I should build him with a little bit more accuracy. Uh, if I was going to rebuild him, I would probably take away from attack, speed, crit, and crit damage. And just make sure I have gear that has extra resist, accuracy, and defense. And just push those stats as, hard, as high as I could so he doesn't die. Even though you kind of don't care if he dies because you revive someone. Hopefully so. So where is he good? I don't know. Let's go find out. This is going to be a pretty quick video in the sense that 
he doesn't really have a lot of places except for certain bosses. So we're going to use him on Magma Dragon. This is the team we used to beat it. See, this is our best team. If it ever clicks, if it clicks, if it clicks, if it clicks, boss guide. So I guess it doesn't want to show me. Hold on. It was being weird. There we go. So this is our best team. All right, we used this team to get through it. It took us 197 turns. Kind of sucks, but whatever. It is what it is. So really what we do here is we have Odachi in the lead for defense. We want to make sure that nobody dies. And we have Odachi, Jizo, and Master Butcher as your provokers. And then really Dark Alhane is just there to make sure that you get some extra damage in because this is a longer fight. It's not a short fight. So having that extra damage really helps if you get the provokes off. Now, we, I did do this a little bit ago and it ended up failing because unfortunately Dark Alhane decided to eat crap and die right in the first beginning in the beginning of the fight because of stupid reasons so just know that this is not a hundred percent team it's just what we use and i have autoed this before if i wasn't going to auto it in the beginning it would probably be smarter like turning off everything right in the beginning so that we have a provoke ready to go right when we start so like i would turn it off now if you're having issues kill this chick because we don't like her we don't like her at all no one's going to get a provoke anyway right so we kill these guys. Let's see. Let's try to get this guy out of here. We're almost there. We're almost there. Oh, I should have used the AOE. That would have been much easier. There we go. We got to provoke. So he's not really a problem anymore. Everybody here basically has some kind of a provoke thing going on. We want all those provokes to be up when we get to the boss because it's really annoying if it's not. So I'm going to put this on auto when we get the first provoke. All right. So we do speed. We're going to do this because usually... It doesn't really matter. Say we want that because she does a lot of damage. Now we're going to hit with the provoke just to see if we get it. We did not. So now we're going to use his main provoke, say, and that's an auto provoke. And now we're going to auto from here on and see what happens. So this is why she died. It was because of that first hit. It didn't work out too well because nobody put a provoke up because everybody was off, off cooldown on their provokes. And then what ended up happening was Dark Alhane just got hit with a hex and then dead skis dead 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 skis if you're having trouble with defense in this fight which i clearly did the last time i did this you might want to consider bringing like valerie in as a secondary for healing and shields just to make sure that no one dies um if you're not having trouble with that then someone like dark alhane or any honestly any dps would be good for this just some you want somebody who can do the most damage to him the quickest i don't even know if dark alhane is that person i mean i probably could even maybe bring in kale or something but who knows right now that's the hero i used i don't think it's the best option remember that this guy is magic affinity so certain heroes would do more damage here if you have them you don't want to bring hp burn in here i believe hp burn heals him if i remember correctly there's some little tweaks and twerks in here that might be a problem so just keep an eye on it read the read the boss battle description if you're having trouble but really as long as master butcher can get a provoke up or anyone can get a provoke up between these these turns that's all that matters you only need one extra turn for him to get his provoke up see so now master butcher got his provoke back up and now hopefully three turns will pass before he gets another attack, and that Hex will disappear. So now he's got a Provoke on Jizo. So that's good. Keep the two... If, if Jizo lands his Provokes every time, it's a win-win. So you could do this without Odachi if you wanted to. But it's a little bit rougher. Because you're kind of basing it on, on more luck than anything else. So now we still have the Provoke up. He's going to attack Jizo, because that's who has the Provoke. And then it moves on to the next one. So whoever gets the next Provoke is basically... The winner. And there you go. Master Butcher comes in. And it basically keeps it so that Master Butcher isn't the only one that's taking damage. Because he can die if he's the only one there. If you're not. Because he does heal. But like sometimes it just doesn't work out in your favor. There you go. We got another Provoke for two turns. Which basically means that we're good to go on Master Butcher's next turn. This is going much better than my previous video that I deleted. Because it just was going poorly. And I was very upset. <laughs> so yeah. It might be, might be best just to make sure you set it up like I did in that beginning where you get that provoke right off the bat and that way it'll save you from possibly losing your DPS right at the beginning of the fight and making the fight take, you know, 20 years. So just that little bit of stopping and restarting is more than enough to guarantee the win. Um, you can put it on auto and hope for the best. That is up to you. Hopefully, 
you know, it works out in your favor where his provoke is up right when the when the battle starts, or that Odachi attacks with his A1 and gets your provoke, or Jizo attacks with his other attack. So you got three shots, and I had that one shot that one shot where it didn't work. Now you can do this differently. There are other ways if you can soak the damage and make sure you can get everybody healed back up to max and that they're pretty defensive. There are other ways to beat this with DPS and certain heroes. I have heard Doom Priest is good from one of the commenters, but Master Butcher is really here for this kind of stuff. Like he can take damage, he can he can not put any damage out, but he's not there for damage. He's there to make sure that no one else dies and to give you that little bit of extra attack and crit damage. I mean crit rate definitely helps. We're getting close to that 197 mark, which is where we're what was our best turn. And luckily, Odachi can heal. Um, Jizo can heal. And uh, Apo Apothecary is there to just heal up anybody who doesn't have healed, essentially. So it looks like we're doing pretty good here. It's working. There's nothing going crazy here. Hopefully nobody gets, uh, gets one shot, which, as you can see, is not happening. That provoke, man. It's all about provoke, and Master Butcher is good at it. So you can use him, essentially, in any dungeon where you might be having trouble or a possibility of someone dying. So I could see like Ice Golem being something where he might be useful as he can provoke maybe the adds and get them to not do damage to your team and drop defense. Uh, he can provoke, well, basically he'll just provoke both adds. Uh, and he can keep, if he dies, he'll, he'll maybe resurrect somebody that could help you out like Apothecary or Sill or somebody else. Which I think we might try out just to kind of see how he does. But yeah, even it, the thing is about a lot of heroes that you're going to see from this point forward is that a lot of these heroes may only have one use. Like it's it's not going to be uncommon that you have a hero that is literally only used for one boss and that boss just gets decimated because of how good that one hero is. So don't think that just because, you know, you have that you're building a hero just for one fight. Like, let's say I ended the video right now. Is Master Butcher worth building? 100% he is, because he gets you through this fight if you're having trouble. That's that's all they're for. Like, a level 60 shouldn't be... The next level 60 you build shouldn't be the hero that's like, oh my god, I love him, he's the best hero. The next hero you build should be the hero that gets you through the fight. So, and that's what I did. I built Master Butcher because I wanted to get through Bommel. And guess what happened? I got through Bommel. So, I can't really show you Bommel right now because he's not in here, as I still said before. Uh, I don't think we use him in any of these other fights. Yeah, these are all damage dealers, so we don't use him in any of, any of the other Doom Tower fights. But he is very useful for getting through your Magma Dragon. Now let's go see if he's good in, in the dungeons. We'll try him out. This might go poorly. We'll see. Uh, we'll do stage 20, because that's the one that's great. Um, we're going to take out Odachi here and bring in... We're going to put her in... I don't know if attack is good for this. I think defense might be better. So we're going to do defense. And then we're going to bring in our boy and see if this can work. I mean, we've got some good heroes here. Let's see if this is something that is worth doing. All right. He does increase your crit rates, which is good. So he can get your attack up, which is nice. He'll provoke random heroes. See? So that's good. You've got your stun with Syl in this fight. And then you've got Leech with Yannicka, which I actually tried this before when Yannicka was level 32 on my last progression video. And it didn't. It didn't go bad. It just didn't go great. She definitely died. I think still had to pick her up a couple times. But she was literally level 32, and I had just started getting her leveled. So now we've got her max, Yannicka. And hopefully this is a good fight. We'll see how it goes. Doing some Reaper action. But yeah, he's going to basically... The good news here is... And honestly, I never thought of this before, which is why it's kind of funny that we're doing this now. Is that the problem in this fight is some AoE damage that you get that will knock your whole team out. So, in that respect, Master Butcher is very good because he can heal everybody up by getting hit. So, there you go. This could actually be this might actually be my my uh, Ice Golden team. For, who knows? We'll see how quickly it goes. If it's my best time, then yeah, I'm definitely using it. So, now we got our reflect damage. So, everybody's going to start doing things that are annoying. Reflect damage is terrible, by the way. It's a really easy way for your heroes to kill themselves <laughs> by doing that. See, there goes Yannicka. That's not uncommon, just so you know. It happens almost every time I fight this battle because of the reflect damage. So unless you have a remove buff hero like um, like Arbiter or uh, Conqueror, like one of those guys. But I don't know if I don't really think that bringing those heroes into this fight 
would benefit you in the long run. I think it would just be for that one thing, and that's and it's not like Sil can't handle resurrecting somebody, so it doesn't really matter. Because then that situation's over, and the boss fight's really what's important. So staying alive here is what matters. We're going to see how it works with this Ice Golem's main attack, and see if it if it benefits us to have Master Butcher in here. Because that AoE is really what kills you guys. It's, it's going to be the thing that kills you every single time, and if it heals everybody, it would be nice. But I think it only works on the, what would you say? It only works on minions. So it might end up being not something that really matters in this fight. But yeah, just having everybody, just having a dude that will not die is very useful in this game. There you go. He's got his crit. He really very rarely loses his HP. Say he like, he gets hit by like nothing. He constantly heals himself back up. It's conceivable that when you get down to the last, you know, bit of health in here, he might be very useful at not dying, even if it's just him. All right, so we've got some smite going here. Really just depends on when that hits, because we might get double tapped. There we go, we got hit. I think it's good for to, to keep still. So yeah, so basically the HP thing doesn't matter in this fight, but having someone who can revive still if she dies on accident would be very beneficial. Or maybe at the end, you know, somebody gets revived right at the last second and Master Butcher will basically bring him back down. I always forget that it oh, it's only minions. So basically if uh if the minions do stuff, then yeah. It'll work really well. but And since there are minions, that is helpful. So I can't say that it's a bad thing. So really, you would just want his provoke to work on the minions to make this a lot easier and have your guys get a little bit more healing in the fight. I was like, the boss doesn't really matter. So far, it looks like it's working. I mean, our HP has been pretty topped off so far. It hasn't been very, very uh, scary which I usually have happen in a lot of the fights that I do in Ice Golem. So conceivably, this might be a better option if you want a 100% win. It's funny how the last few heroes I've been using are actually very good in this fight. Yannicka's actually not doing terrible in here either. If we could get a leech in here, it'd be nice. There it goes. There goes Yannicka. Poor soul. I'm okay with her dying because then you get her picked back up by Syl and everyone's happy. Can we get a provoke on this? No. Nope. I'm really hoping it's because our accuracy is low. So just know that that's probably a better option. His main provoke, I don't even know if he's going to use it. I don't know how his AI works 100%. But if his provoke skill doesn't click when he's on his regular AI, yeah, it could be something you might want to change at the beginning of the fight. To make sure he's constantly using that provoke. Right, everybody's stunned. So that's good. Stuns are never a bad thing. Ooh, look at that. See? But he didn't die. And that's the point. You want someone who does not die. And gets a lot of attacks apparently. Alright. We got Yannicka back up. This is... See the funny thing is, is as long as everybody can heal... And he doesn't get that extra attack right now. Still can bring the whole team back. And then, like I said, basically, what's his face can bring back Sill, which is good as well. If we got some, there we go. That's nice. If we if we got some uh, some leeches, that's nice. There we go. We got another. We got apothecary back, which is good because now he can heal up Sill and make sure we don't die again. There you go. Sill's back up. So far, I mean, basically, like I said, he's there to make, he's there for teams where you don't want everyone, where you want someone who can constantly stay alive. That's really what Master Butch is for. He's, he has, his best skill is just not dying. Look at that. Everyone was dead and now they're all back. All right. So we get one more of those annoying hits before the battle will be over. Now, is this the best option? You know, who knows? I don't think so. I would say it's not, but does that mean that 
you can't use this team? Does that mean you can't use Master Butcher? No. It's just showing you that he is usable, and there are ways that you can use these guys to get through dungeons that are giving you trouble. And there you go. She uses her little Reaper. And we got a nice little defense piece here. Oh, and it's speed. Even better. See that? Sometimes my streams work out well. So yeah, that's Master Butcher. I mean, he he's basically there to just not die. I wish I had something better for you on that, but I don't. Oh, look, we got another we got another uh, Forge Pass thing. Isn't that cute? All right, cool. So let's go in here. Where's my boy at? So essentially, Master Butcher is just the guy that gets you through. He can get you through Bommel, and he can get you through Magma Dragon. And like I said, I do have a video. From the Doom Tower sections, there's only a few rotations, so I have, I've done two of the rotations so far with the heroes that I currently own. Um, Master Butcher is in the Bommel team, and it's a very rough fight. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it does work. Uh, there is a little bit of RNG to it. Not so heavy that you can't win most of the time, but it's enough where you might die once, once in a while. Okay, But yeah, I would say build Master Butcher. Get him up. I mean, he's definitely one of what well, he's one of the heroes that definitely helped me progress in some of the harder dungeons that require a lot more defense to get through. And he's also good in the Doom Tower secret rooms as an HP hero. So there's always a second bonus and faction wars. So you can use him in other things. Don't think it's just this. Um, but yeah, very good for bosses. I tell you that much. Definitely good for bosses. All right. So this is Master Butcher, guys. Uh, if you guys have any comments. You know, leave them. If you have places that you use him that I don't, that I didn't show or talk about today, feel free to bring him up. I know he's got a lot of good uses. He's definitely one of the top tier heroes uh, for rares. So don't don't skip him. He is a very good one. Uh, but yeah, leave your, leave your comments. Let everyone know where you use him. You know, who knows? Maybe we'll all find some great use for Master Butcher and he'll be the best thing ever. So once again, this is Mobile Gamer Nerd. This is Master Butcher. And you guys... Take care.